With me for tonight's politics panel are Nathan Lemer, a policy analyst and outreach manager at the R Street Institute, Sarah Badawi, attorney and legislative matter affairs director at the Progressive Change Campaign Committee, and Jennifer Kearns, contributor to the Washington Times and the Blaze. And thanks you all for joining me. Thank you. Great Thank to see you all again. Yeah. So uh, on the eve of World War II, there was polling done in 1938 and 1939. And what they found was that 60, in 1939, as, as Jews were, well, as, as Poland, you know, as the, Polish, the invasion of Poland was happening and the Warsaw Ghetto was rising up, 68% of Americans said, don't allow Jewish children to come into the United States from Germany. 68% of Americans. Are we seeing this all over again? I mean, isn't, isn't this, and then Ted, Ted Cruz saying, you know, we'll only let in Christian, I, this is, Bizarre, it seems. Is, well, this, is this because the fundamentalists on the Christian Republican side are as crazy as the fundamentalists on the Desh side? Well, I, I think the GOP's reaction is less about religion and more about secure borders. Uh, the one thing I was really struck by Friday night, moments after the terrorist attack, you saw splashed on the bottom one third of all the news network shows. France closes its borders, law enforcement uh, conducting checks. That's because There's they a had a manhunt going. Well, but there's a reason for that, though, and if you talk to law enforcement officials, and I have interviewed the, the head of the Retired Border Patrol Association, dozens of sheriffs in border states, California, Arizona, you name it, um, they all say border security does work. It is a law enforcement tool used not only in manhunts, but in general law enforcement. It's the only way you can track criminals coming into your area, whether it's your country or your state, and it's the only way you can track people going out. It's a very useful tool that law enforcement uses time and time again. There's a reason That's that we saw that. That's not what the French that. were doing. They were, they, first of all, we pretty much now know who these eight, apparently nine guys are. They're all Belgians and French. It's not a single person from outside of Europe. They're all Europeans. And the, the EU, uh, the, the director of security for the EU, came out today and said so. You know, these, and, 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 and number two, I mean, the, the guys on 9-11, they all came in on visas. They were tourist visas or, or student visas. So, Absolutely. Sorry, and Tom, once they secured the borders, one of the suspects even still was able to get out of the country. He was yeah. stopped on his way into Belgium and still continued on. So that argument doesn't hold as much water. To me, the more concerning thing is, who do we think the number one victims of ISIS have been so far? Those are Muslims. And yeah. we need to make sure that as we and other countries look to help these refugees, we keep that in mind. They are fleeing the same exact people we are scared of. I think that's absolutely correct. Um, we have a situation in, in, in Syria and in Iraq and the Middle East where um, you have a number of people who are persecuted looking for freedom and a chance to start over. And um, yes, there was a terrible incident in Paris. And yes, there may be other events like this. but. Unfortunately, a number of politicians, a number of elected officials and people running for office take this opportunity to propagate fear, whether it's on the refugee crisis, but also in my area of expertise is the tech policy front. You have people wanting to break encryption backdoor into my Facebook or my private emails. We're now opening up Section 215 of the uh, bulk metadata collection. That's the area that we fought to reform just a few months ago, and now we want to open that all up again. I mean, this is an example of where politicians like to jump um, I, I just jump for opportunity to, to, uh, to opportunism about a, a, about a terrible tragedy instead of looking at real policy fixes that really addresses the issues that, that many Americans want. That is, I think, that polling's off. If you can poll my friends, we want more people to come here. If I had more than a two-bedroom apartment, I'd bring them here in my own house. Wow. I mean, this is a conversation that I think um, a lot of conservatives, the silent majority of but conservatives Chris Christie about. said that if, even if it was a 12-year-old fleeing in, 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 in the face of bullets, he would not allow them into the United States. And that's where we have to wonder how much power is Iowa politics playing in to, to question over what's good because policy. Because of the fundamental Christianity. And our, our, our friends at the Niskanen Center Iowa. just came out with a great piece talking about um, how none, none of the refugees have really been an issue. And specifically talking about, for example, Steve Jobs was the son of a refugee. A well, Syrian refugee, he, Yes, a Syrian way. refugee. <laughs> I mean, what, and what, what, why, why is it that we're turning back, our back on some of the greatest technologists of our generation who came from refugee families? I mean, if we offer opportunity of hope 
maybe we can have something better out of this. Yeah. Well, I think this begs the point that we need more information. Sarah's right. These Muslims that are freeing are more, they are more of the moderate Muslims. They are under persecution. And, and according to our tenants, of our, the sign written on the side of the Statue of Liberty says we ought to accept them. The problem is we need information, and we do live in the tech age. We should be able to have information as to a simple background check. I'm not even saying a two-week background check. I'm saying a simple background check of who these refugees are. We have not yet Yet been given information by the U.S. government as to what is the proportion of men, what's the proportion of women, what's the proportion of children, and what are the proportion of men between those ages of 16 and 21 been, most likely to commit terror. We have been vetting terror. refugees. The State Department has been vetting refugees since the 40s. We know how to do this. We're good at it. And 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 seriously, if somebody if somebody has the means, motive, and opportunity to come to the United States and set off a dirty bomb or some other god awful thing. They're not going to go through all the hassle of pretending to be a refugee and standing out in the naked, you know, in the cold rain for two, you know, for two weeks and being in refugee camp. They're going to buy a first-class ticket on a tourist visa into JFK, well, you know, the, just like they did to to, to execute 9/11. Well, the intelligence operatives that, that I spoke with over the weekend said there's one problem in particular with the Syrian refugees, and that is they don't have the basic record-keeping structure that we and other many well, the Syrian government countries. Doesn't. Yeah, so, so we don't even know if these people's names are what they say they are. How are we going to background check if they're criminals, if they're part of ISIS, other sleeper cells? We don't know that. We need more information I, before I, we I, have the answer. I do think it's worth noting, again, I, that it's possible that there's a confusion among states. <clears throat> You feel like they're forced to implement something that maybe the State Department or the, or the federal government hasn't given them correct directives to. If that was the reason for why you don't want uh, them going to Michigan or some of the other states, but it doesn't seem like that's the no, reason. This it is, is this is just political posture, and this is this is you know Dick Cheney after 9/11. It's like oh, we all need to be afraid, <laughs> uh, and, and 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 vote for us because we'll 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 protect you. Don't worry. Anyhow, uh, during an appearance at, at the G20 in uh, Antalya, Turkey. President Obama once again ruled out sending an American ground force against ISIS in Syria. Doing so, he pointed out, would set a dangerous precedent given the global nature of the ISIS threat. Let's assume that we were to send 50,000 troops into Syria. What happens when there is a terrorist attack generated from Yemen? Do we then send more troops into there, or Libya, perhaps? Okay. Uh, well, basically, you know, the, the, the president was saying, oh, you know, ground. It, it was a slippery slope argument, I think, and I, and I think he's right. So, thoughts? Well, here's the thing. I, I say no boots on the ground until the rules of engagement are adjusted. Our troops could have won the war on terror five years ago had they been given the tools to. Two key people, Marcus Luttrell, uh, he wrote the book Lone Survivor. A movie was made of that. He stood alone on a mountaintop while people who ratted them out uh, were, came back and killed everyone but him. Uh, the second person, Rob O'Neill, the guy who pulled the trigger for bin Laden, has personally told me uh, before he shot bin Laden, he shoved his wife in front of him. We're fighting an enemy, enemy that puts women and children ahead of everyone else. We wow, need to let our troops loose and oh, let them oh, do the job. I think Sir, Sir, the other key point to this in President Obama's statement that we need to avoid boots on the ground is that this is a battle that has to be won in hearts and minds. We need to be thinking of our strategy in schools, in places of worship, in community centers. This is not something that's going to be solved by sending thousands of troops into Syria. We also need a new AUMF. The old AUMF that's operating our current Middle East uh, foreign policy and military engagements is from terrorists related to 2001 attack. Right. ISIS yeah. is not the not 2001 attack. Congress needs to stand up and say, we are going to do this or that and work together with the right. president and we're, work together with foreign we're policy. We're either at war or we're not. Absolutely. Uh, you know, it's, yeah. More of tonight's politics panel. Right after this break.